Hi all. Yes, you can probably tell I've got something in store for you here. A thing of great beauty, a game of great beauty and stunningness and outrageousness as well. Lula ID triple one nine five against Stockfish eight as the sparring partner. Time control fast and furious 40 moves per two minutes with a two second increment per move. It's another great game from David Grosvenor. E4. We have the book move, the Sicilian defense. This carries on this line, the Kanel Sokolsky attack. Bishop d7. White takes on d7 and sets up the dreaded Morocco C bind. Here we have knight c6, and that's the end of the book given. Now Leela here plays d4 in this position and is already providing red to the ball material to the classic chess engine because there seems to be a very tempting and greedy looking queen g4 which double attacks two pawns and sets up some issues for white uh, Leela just plays d5 here if castling then maybe even stronger than queen takes e4 is just the threat of this position where the knight's kind of pinned and white would lose any significant advantage for example here knight takes queen takes this is nothing to write home about and the other's kind of wasted the white pieces uh but okay so d5 uh, is played in this position though not castling so now on queen takes g2 then there's the, the mechanism rook g1 supported by the knight and that just wins a piece so that's not plausible so we have queen takes e4 check here instead which still wins a pawn and it's still a nice gambit this position to have there seems to be a lot of dynamic potential but white needs to tread very very carefully here there's not this, just the threat of knight c2. There's the less greedy and more positional knight takes f3 check threat. So, for example, if white casually played knight c3, then knight takes f3, doubling white's pawns and winning c4 is miserable for white. Totally miserable. Not take not knight c2 check because here white is winning the queen, basically. Yeah, that's, that's uh, not the idea. So... Let's go back. So here, not knight c3, but instead, uh, Leela takes the opportunity for queen a4 check. And this misplaces uh, the king. The king loses castling rights after king d8. You might think, well, b5 might be an interesting try here. You can look in the pinned comments of this video. I have actually analyzed uh, variations involving b5 in this position. Uh, here, here's a sample queen a6. Check. King d2, the crafty <laughs> queen d3 check. Crafty was another is another classic engine of the past, where this is nice for black. But white, let's play out this line with king c1, rook b8. This situation is very interesting, uh, where basically black's underdeveloped here, and white's got the prospect of past pawn potential here. I'll give you a sample, just a fictional sample. White well, has a small edge here, it seems. And if white gets the queens off, then that's good for the past pawns on the queen side. But it seems here, just as a fictional example, white could end up with dangerous connected past pawns with an advantage. So, uh, yeah, very interesting stuff on b5, but it seems to be in white's favour. So black voluntarily loses casting rights. And we have now knight bd2, which not only invites knight c2 but defends knight f3 so there's no structural damage hitting the queen we have knight c2 check just to rule this out knight takes f3 knight takes is very nice for white you can see it's it's major compensation here white's getting on with castling and is going to blast black pretty soon with things like b4 this is just huge for white this is brilliant for white so uh knight c2 check King e2, and we see now the the by by moving the king, uh, well the knight's attacked now, attacking the queen. The queen steps back. So here, Leela offers the exchange sacrifice b4, or is it an exchange sacrifice? Is it something more? In fact, after b4, Black didn't take this rook, 
and played actually knight takes e3 instead. Why is this? <laughs> it's a good question. If knight takes b4, let's rule this out. a3, check, king d1. Say black sacks the knight because if knight a6, this is good. There's some really great stuff going on with queen takes a6, winning loads of pieces and pinning the knight to the rook. Really beautiful variation here in this line with a big advantage to white. Uh, so let's go back there again. Queen d3, king d1, knight takes. So that we're ruling out knight a6 because of this rook b1 concept. And black doesn't have sufficient compensation here because knight d4 uh, finds a way to black's king here, for example, like this. And the black king is just getting it, for example. So this is all pretty dangerous after knight takes b4. Uh, on knight takes a1 instead, this position exchange down, but look at black's development. It's just horrendous. It's just absolutely visually horrendous. Visually crushing. Say queen g4 just to, well, maybe for the g pawn for the bishop to move. It's major sliding block puzzle issues here. Uh, b takes, rook b1, and there's multiple ways of winning this. Rook takes or bishop takes even. And let's go with bishop takes, the more spectacular. The rook infiltrates. This variation is very beautiful. Where the, the knight and queen are both nudged off d7. For example here, nudging the knight would win the knight. It's totally hopeless uh, for black here, as you can imagine. <laughs> King e3 could seal it as well. It's it's just massive advantage for white. So yeah, knight takes a1 is hopeless. So we're we're ruling out these possibilities here. So knight takes e3 is played. This pesky knight takes on e3. And does Leela capture or do something else? What do you think? What would you play here with white? So both rooks are connected. Hello, hello. Ready for action. And that is a prelude to doubling them or maybe tripling them with the queen. <laughs> and if we triple on a file, what do we get? We get lateral pressure, guys. We get lateral pressure. So file pressure gets converted to lateral pressure. And here, look, Black's army is on the back row, most of it. So if we get lateral pressure fictionally on the back row, that's going to be dangerous, isn't it? That's a fictional scenario. How on earth does that happen, you think, from here? Get ready for your Instagram uh, picture clipping. Take the screen soon uh, for what you're about to see. So uh, knight takes e3. We have b takes c5. Spectacular. Let the knight do its damage. It's the only piece moving around, hopping around like a lunatic, just winning material here. Meanwhile, the rooks now have a foul. What do we know about files? They lead to lateral pressure. The knight's just taking more material. If knight f6 here, it doesn't matter. The rook can still take the b file. And this is just nuisance stuff. It can even be ignored there. This knight can be totally ignored uh, and taken at leisure here. And just the attack's crashing through here. You can see that once the rooks take the files, then there's lateral pressure of rook takes c7 for rook b8. For example, here is absolutely crushing with a big advantage. Uh, so, yeah, knight takes g2. So this knight's moving. It seems to be a huge amount of times in this opening. Uh, so we have now the file pressure from the rooks. Queen g4, rook takes b7, lateral pressure on d7. Queen's own... The only one defending d7 from being mate. Check. King d1. The knights really hold each other well and secure the king away from any lethal checks. Rook c8. Check. King e8. Check. King d8. Foul pressure. And the rooks are ready to transition into lateral pressure now. f6 is played. So if knight f6. Check. Rook b8. Lateral pressure. For example. And that's destructive there after Queen C7. That wins material and the game, as an example. On uh, here, instead of that, uh, D takes C5, Rook B8, Queen takes C5 using that pin there. 
this is uh, crushing because there's rook b8 lateral pressure crushing winning material so full pressure then lateral pressure so f6 looks like an awful move to have to play blocking in the knight but yeah that this file is just lethal here rook takes a7 lateral pressure emerging now either on the uh, the seventh rank or the eighth rank as options here it's such a strong position that other things win as well uh, check the notes but it's such a powerful position okay here's one even this which seemingly goes into this horrible tactic even this is winning for white check white can always get out of things because of the the checks the black king white has a big advantage there uh, c takes d6 is also possible for example here knight d4 and uh, this is just devastating for example like this is just absolute desperate play from black which ends up getting mated so rook takes a7 red the rooks are ready to rumble for lateral pressure here and look at all these pieces on the first row rook takes c5 queen a4 knight d3 this is totally visually crushing Leela is the most instagram friendly chess engine in the world and it's here guys i would say this is a nice snapshot of horror for your instagram accounts so get ready snip the screen here guys tags hash Leela chess hash kings crusher hash casey chess if you use all three that's much appreciated uh, i just think this is a game of huge beauty and punishment punishment of greed punishment of this knight hopping around uh it's approaching like nine times in the opening it's uh now the knight takes another pawn it's it's a totally lost position king e2 e5 <laughs> black's not doing anything uh rook takes c8 queen a5 check and the game ended here basically a nice continuation would be check 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 and we've got access to e8 here with all the checks so we play rook takes c8 check here and start mopping up everything on the first rank if we want with check taking here <laughs> and if this knight moves then we can either take the rook or eliminate both knights a nice choice to have take the rook or just check here and we can eliminate this pesky knight for example like this that could be a fitting conclusion to eliminate the cheeky greedy materialistic knight so I'll take you back to the final position and actually I'll take you back to the Instagram position <laughs> oh it's just so beautiful uh, okay I hope you enjoyed this one as much as me uh, the unfortunate thing is I, I think I'm getting too emotionally connected to Leela now I start moaning on forums oh she should be in the TSEC super finals a wild card I think I'm getting too emotionally connected by Leela's chess it's just so stunning I feel we're being deprived if Leela is not in every single computer chess tournament going I feel we we are as a society being deprived of artifacts of great aesthetic beauty but there are other tournaments around and yeah this flow of Leela games is super incredible to me super dynamic beautiful chess Leela is the most social media friendly engine in the world in my view because of her visually crushing dramatic chess I hope you do too comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much